Okay, thank you so much for these questions because it, I'm, I'm excited about them because it means I, I have opportunity to share how the Lord has moved in our lives on with each one of these things. So, right, I think this question is referring to the Bella Bull and that is how will it affect my children? It's going to help your children to be a people of faith, trust in God and learning to pray. That's how it can, can affect your children. Or if you're going to be a parent that is terrified and scared and talking about, but I don't know if my, what's going to happen because what, what, you know, what if I, if I get arrested or what if I don't this and what if they that and what if or whatever. Well, now you are being an example of being indecisive or unsure of your calling or afraid. You actually being that example to your children. So how will it affect your children depends on you. Are you going to stand in faith and say, listen, guys, there's a bill that's been passed, family, let's pray about this. Let's get together. Dad, could you please, you know, take your stand here and let's pray that this will actually be an opportunity for us to witness, an opportunity for us to build, uh, for our faith to grow. So that's how it can affect your children. Or it can affect your children in a way where they feel very insecure because mom and dad are panicked and they're worried and they're scared about what's going to happen and they don't know if they can or can't um, home educate next year because there's this bill. Okay, news flash. Do you know that every year something happens in the government that's enough to make you panic? Oh, you all know this already. <laughs> right. Every year Oikos deals with something. One minute it's this curriculum's come out and you have to all use that curriculum because the law said so. And all of a sudden education departments are saying, home educators, you have to use this. And everybody goes into a panic and they start using that. After three months, they go, you know, it doesn't work. It's not working. It's just like eating dry bones when we were used to eating nice, good, wholesome food. So we're not going to do that anymore. We got it. We were law abiding. We did what the law told. We bought it. Then we put it in the cupboard and now we're doing what we, what we know is good for our family. That's what happened a couple of years ago. Next year, it's the next one and the next one. So what do we do about it? We support the organization that is taking care of those things on our behalf. Thank you very much, Pizza Lotsi Trust. Let's give you some donation there to, to help you do that work. And let's pray for you. I'm, I'm so enjoying the fact that there's two men here today. And we've got the added blessing that there's a birthday boy. <laughs> okay, so how things affect your children regardless whether it's the available or whether it is the, um, the curriculum that you're supposed to have to be using or whether it is when they go to university, they have to have A, B, and C, and X, Y, and Z, and everything else, and all the boxes ticked. Well, another news flash. We have got one test me after another of people that have gone off to university with all their ducks in the row, and they weren't accepted. And the poor parents have emptied their pockets getting their certificate done this way, because that's what everybody's doing at this time. And they get to university. Oh, no, sorry, full, full university. You can't, you can't come in here. And they did all the things that the world told them to do. So another question. I've got a question for you. I've got your questions here, but I've got one for you. Do you see them building universities everywhere to accommodate all the new... Nope, you don't. Uh -uh. Shall I tell you what's happened to the universities in the States? They turned into residential apartment blocks. They closed down. Not all of them, okay, but it's happening. Why? Because people can do their degrees online. <laughs> And so why are they going to university? Should I tell you how our son got um, educated? First of all, he was home educated. And then when he was 16 or so, he, wanted, he got interested in media. And so he started doing media-related courses, not maths you see to the end, calculus and those things. He didn't do that. <gasps> Shock. <laughs> okay. He didn't even open the calculus book because he was... Because he was busy doing whatever. I don't know what this is called. Um, engineering of some kind. Well, technical stuff. He started doing that. Besides, it's a good thing he didn't go all the way to calculus because I would never have been able to help him. <laughs> but, but it doesn't matter. That doesn't, that doesn't matter either because Steve Demi helps him, doesn't he? With Pop Steve Demi. And, oh, I'm so thankful for Steve Demi. Um, Steve Demby of Maths UC, and you know what one little boy said? He said, Mommy, he says, when are you going to put Matthew's div DVD in? Matthew. Matthew C. Oh, isn't that sweet? I told Steve. He was so blessed by that. 
<laughs> so, so Jamie went online and he registered to be to do something, one of these things, film school things. All right, and he had to put his name and his ID and where was he educated, home educated. Okay, what level are you up to? Mom, what, what? <laughs> What grade did I do? They want a grade. <laughs> okay, no, you didn't do any grades. Just say, I'm educated. you educated. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then blank, blank, can't fill in all those things. Bottom, at the end, you've got to put your credit card details to pay for the course. And that's what must work, the credit card number. <laughs> okay, so done, got, good. He's got his course. He starts doing his course. Next thing, he gets a certificate. He goes, oh, look, they sent me a certificate. What must I do with it? I don't, you don't have to do anything. Just carry on. Do, you got that now. Do the next one, whatever the next one is. Okay? Now, the thing is, if he went to go and work in a film studio or uh, go to a movie or go make a movie or whatever it is, and he went to them and he said, look, I, I've got my grade 12. I did this. I got this. I got these marks in grade. Now he's 26, let's say. Okay? And he says, I got these for geography and history. And so, they, are they interested? No, quite right answer. They're not interested in what grades you got in matric. Anybody who's here who got matric levels, marks, when in your adult life has somebody said to you when you went to do your shopping at Pick and Pay and you went to pay? <laughs> did, did they say to you, well, I'm sorry, you can't buy your groceries unless you got, show me your matric certificate. You know, you can't shop here unless you got a matric. Okay, now that's a bit extreme, okay, I realize that. But I'm just saying, when in everyday life have you needed to be able to issue that information to somebody? And even now while you're sitting here, when do you think about it? And, but yet the year you were there and you were doing it, it was like everything, okay? All right, so now back to Jamie, he's 26 years old, and he's going off to, re to go and work on a movie set. And he says to them, here's my portfolio. I've helped in a ministry and I've helped produce these 500 video clips. This is what I've been doing in the last five years. But next to him is a guy that came out of a degree, and he's got all these things, and all the paperwork, the certificates, he hands them over. And the film director has to interview these two for the job. What are they doing in the UK? They're saying, I'm not interested in your documents, your certificates. We're doing a character test on you, putting you through a character test, character analysis. It was all over the news a little while ago. They, they employ people according to the results of the character test. That's the fact of there. I don't know so much about here. But I'm just saying, you know, why panic about this latest thing at the moment is you must have whatever the school leaving certificates is at the moment, I don't know, in home education, because every year I hear a different thing. So I won't, I won't name them, but there's one, one year, everybody's doing this course to get school leaving certificate, and the next year, we're not doing that anymore, we're doing this now. And then a few years later, it's something else. So what I want to ask you is when your young adults are between 16 and 18 and getting ready to exit from home education, why are you exit into adult life? Why are you spending all your time worrying about what certificate they're going to get? When you ought to be spending your time making sure they got this. And making sure they're equipped by God to be ready for Him. So, parents aren't going, tell you, this is such a big responsibility, making sure that my child's ready for God. You know, I've got to make sure that when he goes out there into, into adult life, he's equipped and he's ready. He, I know that he's praying, I know that he knows the Savior, I know that he... You know, you as a parent have got that peace. To, well, I got that. That's why I'm a Proverbs 31 lady. Because I'm blessed. Amen. Yes. I'm blessed because my children have been raised up and they follow after God. What more does anybody want? My, my um, daughter and son-in-law are busy looking house hunting at the moment. She's been married for ne just nearly four years. And they're busy house hunting. So what matters I could be worrying about all kinds of things. My mother's had this chat to me. Don't you think they're sort of going a little bit beyond what they, ca ca they can manage? And You know, the adults who are watching are concerning themselves with these things. But then you get a message from your daughter that says, we've looked at this and this and this. We're just putting it to the Lord, and we're waiting to hear from Him. Job done. 
but she didn't get her matric certificate. So I don't know if that's going to be a problem when she goes to <laughs> when she goes to buy her house. When they go to buy or rent or something, I don't know. Maybe they're going to need a matric certificate. What do you think? What are they interested in? The bank balance. So now, how do you get the bank balance to be what it needs to be for them to be able to accept you for a bond or whatever? You work hard. How do you work hard if you don't have a work ethic? How do you know, how do you cope? How do these young people cope out there in, in adult life without the absolute foundations of what they, of what they required to have to get, to be able to cope with those things, to be able to cope with life there and be an example of the Lord in it? Just think of that. Just think of this young, this young lady and her husband leaving the estate agent saying, well, thank you very much for all your help. We're now going to go and pray about it. Because we can't actually sign on that until we've prayed. Hmm. Or you're panicking because your, your, your little children got married and then they started a family and now they're going to buy a house and they can't actually afford it and now they're tied in and now there's a financial problem and there's all of that going on. And you're worrying yourself sick. You're getting ill, ulcers and everything else from worry. That's, it can be like that, because you spent your time making sure they got their certificates while you neglected this. I'm not saying you can't do both, but this gets neglected. And by the way, the word says you know, you're not allowed to worry. You do know that, eh? Right, good. And it also says that worry is a sin. That's what it says. It's a sin. So it's time to repent if you're worrying. Stop worrying, because it's going to put you in a trap. And now you're going to be in that trap of worry and all the results that come from it. All the fruit that comes from worry. Or you can walk in faith and get all the fruit that comes from that. It's your choice.